You have reached the Geek Elite. Good luck. Welcome, everybody, to We Have Issues, Geek Elite Media show that's about everything literary. Books, comic books, webcomics, manga, and everything else you might be reading. We're here to talk about it. As always, I am your host, Keith, and I'm joined, first of all, by my stalwart sidekick, who's always at my side, Josue. Hey, and I'm so happy to be here and to be doing this, because I was going down a really bad hole of rage by playing Bloodborne before this, so this is going to be a zen. (laughs) Yes, definitely. <laughs> you do that to yourself, man. I know. That's why I avoid those games. I platinumed it, but then it's like I still need to do a DLC, and like the first boss in is just like, "Fuck this noise! I can't. I want to quit so bad." It's just peer pressure. <laughs> Don't let Crozen do that to you. So. <laughs> but now I have to. <laughs> uh, and we are joined today for this very special episode by uh, someone that we've spoken with before, and we're very happy to have back um, nearly a year to the to that uh interview so it's really cool to kind of check in a year later uh with comic creator specifically writer of one of our favorite books finger guns justin richards hey hey. how's it going everybody Uh, it's going great man um so yeah we're really excited to talk to you because last time we spoke with you we were about halfway through finger Mm -hmm. guns and me and Josue were just chock full of theory. <laughs> like, we're, we're like, what's going to happen? Who, who, what's in? So I'm really excited we get to check in with you afterwards. Me too. Uh, I love so we're hearing talk- if I fooled you or not. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're, we're definitely going to talk about that. But I wanted to talk to you briefly about uh, just the finger gun ex- experience. In the end, I know when we spoke, you said Vault was great. Working with Vault was great and such. But... um. In the end, how was the reception to the book? Like, did you get a lot of great positive feedback from the fans? Like, how how was that for you? Yeah, uh, the feedback has been amazing. Um, I think I found, like, one negative review. And it was somebody that clearly didn't know what they were talking about. Because they, <laughs> they, they called Rebecca's colors flat. And I was like, okay, well, you don't know anything. Oh, my God. You don't know anything. <laughs> what? Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. So I quickly dismissed that one. And yeah, everything else has been great. Um, had a lot of positive. I got to do Library Con 2020. Oh, and, sick. Yeah. And uh, that was great. And the, got a great reception from the librarians that were in attendance. And <laughs> yeah, uh, just overall really positive vibes. Good time. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I mean, speaking about our personal experiences with finger guns, uh, we push the we push the book on Twitter a lot. Yeah, and I appreciate um, that. We <laughs> well, we really liked it, man. I mean, it's it's very much awesome. Um, you uh, probably your uh, your book and Money Shot were the two that really got us into Vault, and now we're like dedicated Vault nice. fans. And those are just two very spectrum yeah. books. Yeah. <laughs> One not for kids at all. The other. You know, <laughs> might work for some young kids. Yeah, now like we have a dedicated vault review section in every week, as long as there's a vault book. Oh yeah, pretty much if it's a vault number one, we're gonna pick it up. Yeah, because yeah. the work. So yeah, you guys kind of blaze the trail for that. So yeah, um, and happy to do it. One thing we, re- yeah, <laughs> one thing we really really enjoyed, and we we talked about this on our show when Finger Guns was coming out, was at the same time as Finger Guns, we were also getting a book alienated mm-hmm. i don't know if you're familiar with it i didn't it, read but it but i am slightly familiar it's obviously it's not even close to the same book as finger no, guns nothing but is it was <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it was like a group of teenagers where something paranormal happens mm. and they were both kind of dramatic and emotional and they were both coming out at the same time and me and him were like we're counting down the weeks and we're like are 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 the finales coming out on the same day? Can we take that? <laughs> <laughs> Too much. Punch, Luckily, man. they were weak staggered, thankfully. Nice. <laughs> so, but yeah. But yeah, so I just wanted to, yeah, I wanted to talk about Finger Guns first just because we enjoyed it so much. And we always recommend everybody pick it up. The trade is out mm-hmm. through Vault. I appreciate um, that. And it's, 
It's really great. And yeah. any criticism about the coloring is completely foundless because if that book is anything, it's vibrant. Yeah, Fuck yeah. literally <laughs> like the coloring. Rebecca killed it so much. And Val and I, every time we'd get pages back, we'd be like, oh my God, did you see what she did now? And so, yeah, anybody that <laughs> thinks that's flat just is a moron who's just trying to troll me. A moron. Yeah. Yeah. One thing we've noticed becoming a part of comic book critique is that so many people who consider them professionals, themselves professionals criticizing comics don't understand coloring and don't understand lettering. Mm -hmm. like and so they just think that's a good thing to point to and i'm like "Mm, no you don't understand it so it doesn't make sense so like we've worked hard to try to understand those things ourselves like we've actively talked to colorists and letterists to kind of get an idea you know and so that's how you do it now we kind of yeah we kind of get it you know like but um it's it's yeah you can kind of tell when's when it's a bad faith criticism if you will i mean (laughs) i've written a comic book now and i still don't know everything about colors and letters so (laughs) (laughs) yeah so speaking of your creative team over there um we're going to talk about your new project in a bit but Mm -hmm. i did want to share a quick moment that we thought was great um once again we pick up a lot of number ones and there was a recent number one called uh, proctor valley road which uh, we really enjoyed came out from boom Mm -hmm. and i was reviewing it Josue didn't have a copy of it yet it was just myself and i was reviewing it i'm like this art it just reminds me of something and it makes me feel really good. And I'm sitting there and then I showed it to us way over our webcam. He goes, I think it kind of looks like Val's art. I'm like, it does look like Val's art, but not, not the same. And then I'm like, it's not the same, but I think we just miss Val that much. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, so but shout like, out follow- to Val. Love yeah, that art. Yeah. To Val, Cause like, I love following them on Twitter. It's like when they, when they were posting a bunch of like different, like, like monster girls yeah and there's one where like the the horns are coming out of the eyes like all of them were just really fucking great, great designs so shout out to val like amazing work and i just i can't wait for their, for their next book yeah if you yeah, totally. if you ever want like some of the best body horror drawings yeah. just follow val and enjoy <laughs> when val yeah. did the 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 spider lady the, 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 the cat there was a cat a cat that, mm-hmm. that they did a reference off of like a blind cat that you can just see like the holes inside uh-huh. and then they just like morph this cat to something i was like god i love that one so <laughs> goddamn much yeah i love <laughs> and he likes drawing like uh horny demon girls it's all good it's all good yes. stuff the spider girl is my favorite one i think <laughs> for <laughs> listeners um if you're curious who we're talking about, we're talking about Val Halverson, who is the artist on Finger Guns. And you can follow them on Twitter at Fishmas, like Christmas, but with fish. That, that's uh, exactly how he announces it. <laughs> <laughs> for all this body horror, it's great. Uh, you guys know I, I'm not the most um, stable stomach for those kind of things. <laughs> so, But it, it's it's still appealing. I really enjoy I'll, it. So. I'll give you guys a fun little tease because it's uh, I still own it. So like because uh, it's not picked up anywhere. But Val and I are working on another story together and it, yeah. it will be horror. So yes. Oh, awesome. man. Awesome. I just made Hosway's month. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> That's awesome. Well, uh, speaking of which, so we do want to go ahead and uh, move on to talk about why we're here, because it's actually something that we're genuinely excited about. Um, we are um, uh, we are backing a Kickstarter uh, that you started for your new project, and it's a unique project. And being a child of the 90s like I am, it's something that kind of hits close to home, close to my childhood for me. Uh, you are starting a comic zine. Yes. Uh, for for those of you too young to know what a zine is, uh, why don't you explain it yourself, Justin? How how you see a zine is, and kind of give us an idea of what to expect. Put me on the this. spot here, like I'm some kind of <laughs> professional. Uh, I would say you know a zine is something that has a variety of formats in it. Um, cause that's why I'm calling it a comic zine because there is a five page comic story mm-hmm. in it, but there's a lot of other stuff now as well um i have a pinup gallery featuring literally today's top talent uh in the art comic art world and Mm -hmm. got uh, some poetry in there i wrote a mad lib activity that i call a sad lib and (laughs) we got some oh yeah always go for the pun and 
Uh, yeah, we have affirmation cards that I had designed by uh, Aviva Mayartsi. Her and I worked together on that. Oh, nice. I was I I was looking at those two. I was like, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, the zine uh, culture originally was, um, if I remember correctly, uh, there was a big push of it in the '90s and probably the late '80s around the punk culture, mm-hmm. around counterculture in general. Yeah, it's very homemade. It's very like uh, handmade, if you will. Yeah, this will be a little and, more uh, premium than printing it out myself and yeah. folding it, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's still like the concept is there, which is really cool. Um if anybody, you know, we see anthologies in comics. Oh good. I was just gonna say if anybody needs like a, a refresher on the zine world, uh I watched that movie Moxie on Netflix, which is yeah. all about a young girl whose mom is Amy Poehler, who used to be part of like that punk age making zines and and trying to rebel oh that's right I remember. and yeah this girl starts making her own for her school where there's tons of sexism and it's all about like liberating the women uh like the young girls at their school and like fighting against like how they can't get away with wearing tank tops and stuff like that yeah there's also um in the indie comic uh strange days uh, which was incredible, by the way, if you guys haven't read it. Um, it's It stars a trio of girls going to college. Um, one of them makes a, a feminist zine in one of the arcs and uses it to, like, trash a guy that upset her at one point, but he's actually a genuinely nice guy. And it, it was a really great arc, but yeah, that's another instance of a zine of, like, kind of modern stuff, too. So. Nice. Um, it is a really cool thing, you know, and I, I think it's, um, like I said, we you see anthologies in comics, you know, where, and especially with the big two right now, they're doing a lot of anthologies where they're like, here's this character. We're going to get eight writers and eight artists do something with it, mm-hmm. basically. But we don't really see something like this where it's, you know, a compilation of all these different um, formats, I guess you would say. Yeah. Um, obviously, the primary is going to be, you know, the comic. And me and Josue received a an advanced copy uh, to review and uh, looked over it. Um, I, it's it's mostly a visual story. Like yeah, is, is what we'll say. <laughs> so the name, I guess, we haven't even said the name of the zine is a Silent Night, and um, I, the original script does have speech. Uh, it had words mm-hmm. designed into the story, but between mm-hmm. the name and the theme and how it presented as a silent story, I really, really liked it. So I decided to keep it as it is with no words. Yeah, it would seem strange to have dialogue in this, actually, looking over it. You know, I'm looking over it while we're sitting here again. Yeah, honestly, and, it's, a positive, it's a positive change. I'm, I'm going through it, too. I'm like, you know what? Like, s- s- hearing the name out loud now or hearing it now, it's just like, and I'm scrolling through the story. Like, you know what? This makes more sense, especially with, like, the whole aspect of, like, once you left to your, to your lonesome, you're just like, and you're just like in your own inner thoughts. And especially because like, like, you're, you're diving into something really heavy here and like on purpose. Like I, I, I love that you do that in your writing, like finger guns, like dealt, dealt with some heavy, heavy shit, which is great. Made the book so much better. And then here it's like, I love that there, there are no dialogue. Cause it's just like, you're reading it, you're interpreting it yourself or you're putting in your own words of like what you would go through or what, what would be going down through your day. Exactly. Through, through this visual. Yeah. And it's actually, it paints it, it paints it so much better that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it makes it more personable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I like the the um, the level of cooperation with this with this scene. Uh, you got you got a lot of people to assist you with it and mm-hmm. like to contribute to it, and uh, I think that's really cool. I think it, it appeals, and I also think it might be fun for creative types to, you know, spend a day working on something that's not related to the thing they've been working on for months. You know, and like do something fun, do something to the side, whether it's like a pinup or to write a poem for you, or as you mentioned, uh, help you design the affirmation cards. Like, yeah. it's just like, it's, yeah, it's like a, it's sounds like it's a lot of, it would be a lot of fun for them, but also it's really cool to appeal to us. Cause right there on the covers, everybody that contributed and me and us, we were just looking at it being like, wait, Val's in this and Liana Kangas. I love Liana and Megan Hutchinson and Gavin, Gavin Gadry did the art for the comic, you know? Mm-hmm. So we we're just kind of like, Oh, that's really, really cool to see all this. Um, all these people come together with this. Yeah. I think it's um, a pretty so, cool, diverse collection but, and it was a lot of fun to, 
it's been a slow, slow process. I've been working on this for the better part of two years. Um, and it started out just as the five page story as like my own little exercise to like practice more complete storytelling. And then once I got, like, I decided to hire Gavin to draw it and Val to color it. And then I was like, this should be something more. I should send this, like, I should make this something that people can, can buy. And, it, and like in one way or another, it's going to appeal to someone. Like yeah. it's going to hit somewhere or another, even if they're not a comic, not, they're not a comic book person. Look, it's a sad lip part. And you can just probably write that one over so like your own answers so many times over and over to, again, depending on what you're going through. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a very strong, just it's 19 pages, but it's so strong for what, for what it is. And you're pushing out something about the subject super good. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. That was my goal. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I, like I said, uh, it's one of the things uh, we're very excited to see as you work with Val again, obviously. Um, and what you told us, like the little tease, that's awesome. We're very excited to hear that. So, um, But yeah, I also, again, I, not just the variety of talent, uh, which would require quite a level of like um, um, coordination between a lot of different people, which is really cool. But also, um, as we kind of mentioned, the variety of things offered between... A, a miniature comic and eight page strip. Um, and then um, all the prints. I really like all the prints, to be honest. I would love some of these, you know, mm-hmm. at a con style large print, especially. <laughs> I, like, I know Josue spoke to me specifically about the Val print. Oh, yeah. Uh, Honestly, it was like, as soon as I scroll into it, it's like, oh, she does a cool different prints. And like the second one is like, oh, cool. <laughs> this yeah. one, I can see it. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, poetry, uh, as you mentioned, the sad lib, which is great. I went through it and was plugging things in. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and then the affirmation cards. So um, I wanted to speak a bit about the affirmation cards at the end, because um, one thing I haven't talked about with the zine, because I kind of want to save it to this moment, is the theme of it and the purpose of it, which is mental health. Mm -hmm. Um, A very important thing to us. And early on in the zine, you have a, um, an intro essay where you, you speak a bit about mental health and your own, you know, personal history with it Mm -hmm. and, you know, going through all that. And, uh, you know, obviously we think it's very, you know, it's very courageous to to talk about this stuff. You know, it's not the kind of thing that people want to talk about. It's not easy to talk about. Um, so it, first of all, you know, thank you for even, you know, coming forward with your own story, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and you know, it, it's, it's kind of a, you, you know, you feel like you're admitting a weakness, but you know, like that's not the purpose of all this. So yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> so, um, that goes to the affirmation cards, which are at the end and these can be cut out guys. And this is another like traditional thing with zines was interactivity. There was a lot of stuff like this that you could you know, maybe cut out or there might be activities where you could color things in. Or, yeah, you know, I almost designed, uh, and it, this is another fun little exclusive for you guys. And, you know, it, it ended up not happening. So take that for what it is. But I almost designed like a map. I want to design like a, like a maze map and like, yeah. and have like the goal be to like navigate your feelings, you know? Ooh. <laughs> I thought that would have yeah. been really fun and cool. Do your feelings. It just didn't, didn't fit. <laughs> uh yeah. into everything so but i thought I, it, maybe if i ever end up doing another one i'll i'll make sure to navigate my feelings with everyone on that <laughs> Dude, that'd be great <laughs> yeah. um one thing uh as i was talking about with the affirmation cards uh so affirmation obviously is something to remind you something to boost you mm-hmm. and so uh the cards here are basically things to tell you, you know, I'll just use one of them because like, I don't want to give everything away, but like one that just says your feelings are valid, mm-hmm. you know, and everything on the back is it explains exactly, you know, it, it boosts you up. It tells you what you you know you need to do and everything. I really dig that. And as part of the Kickstarter, I believe um, you can get uh, like plastic coverings for these. So you can actually like carry them and keep them yeah um unfortunately like i don't have like it's not going to be like a hard shell uh yeah. thing because like it's just the size is is not very common next time yeah. i will just ha- ask uh, i'll think about designing them as like trading cards or something if i do them so that i can just like <laughs> buy a set of pokemon 
card protectors. Yeah, those really little good. plastic ones. <laughs> yeah, pieces, but yeah. Uh, I do have some like, yeah, plastic sleeves. And, you know, you could slip a little piece of cardboard in there if you wanted to make sure that it didn't bend or anything. But, yeah, the mm-hmm. idea was that if people wanted to, they could cut these out carry them with them in their back pocket, their purse, wallet, wherever, uh, you know, put one on your desk at work, um, something like that. And then if you're having a, a bad time, look over, pull it out. And then you, you've got your affirmation of, you know, like you're not alone or it's okay to make mistakes. Your feelings are valid. Yeah. Yeah. Which I love uh, that idea, especially the one on, Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I don't know if you caught it, but the one that says it's okay to make mistakes, it's off center. And that I love that so much. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God, <laughs> well, now I see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite one That's because great. of that. That's awesome. Yeah, I really like the idea, especially when you mentioned, I didn't even think about for your desk at work. Um, because I have an office job. And I have things on my desk. When we're in the office, we're not right now, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I have things on my desk that just keep me going through the day you know what i mean like i have a picture of my niece or i have a little drawing um that an artist did i can't remember who at a con but it's just like this disgusted cartoon face and it's really (laughs) tiny and i love it and every time i'm just disgusted with the customer i can look at it and be like yeah me too buddy (laughs) Uh, so yeah (laughs) yeah i mean yeah that's really cool i've got like a miniature commission of my dog a picture of my son i have a light that says destroy all nazis on it like i try to always (laughs) put stuff on my (laughs) desk that uh you know is like that and that includes uh, i didn't mention but aviva who designed the affirmation cards for the zine she, mm-hmm. I got the idea from her because she had affirmation cards that she made herself, like really, really high quality, cool ones. And I was like, I want to do that, but focus it on mental health. And that's why I decided to ask her if she'd partner with me to design them. And I, yeah. keep, I keep hers. I have two of hers that I keep on my desk. Nice. Ones that say, you're going to be okay. And like, it's okay to like not get everything finished right now kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's what i like about it. like the you chose to include affirmation cards this, uh, at the end of the, of the comic and especially by the end of the zine and especially at the end like on the on the back sides of them like again this is a very strong topic and like not a topic that not many people want to explore or talk about or put out in, into this type of form but it's stuff that still kind of if you need to express it thank god you're like you're the person to do it justin uh but that being said i'd love that you also chose to uh put in the information like the the, the phone number, the National uh, Suicide Prevention li- Lifeline, just in case you're just having just like a not okay day and those affirmation cards are there and they've been helpful, but you're just, you're just down on your dumps on that one day. You can just, just somebody's going to listen to you. You can just yeah. still use that lifeline. So I love that you like added that to each of them. Oh, thanks. Yeah. That I had like other stuff planned and Aviva was like, we should make like just one message that yeah. fits for all of them and, and like gets the information mm-hmm. straightforward. And yeah. she was right, and it, it works great. Um, yeah, the other thing on the back of those, and kind of as part of the whole zine, is I partnered or teamed up with the ADAA, which is the Anxiety mm-hmm. and Depression Association of America. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're just a, a organization, a charity that is all about, you know, positive mental health and like working on yourself and they have if you go to their website adaa.org they've got you know uh forums where you can just go talk to people they've got you know they have links to help you find local therapists if you need them or they have their own like therapists online that you can try to connect with and they have um just like free articles and all kinds of stuff to like you know, help people work on themselves if they want to. And so I thought that was cool and wanted to feature them in the zine. No, that's, that's yeah. awesome. That's when I knew this is, this is like a, an actual serious attempt to this project was including the, the the phone number. And then when I noticed the ADAA, like the logo and then like well, the whole logo on it, I was like, fuck, this is actually a really important piece of like, <laughs> like literature now. Like it's for sure. Like mm-hmm. it's going to be important to a lot of people. Like, like they can get their hands on it or, if, or even in passing. Yeah. I really hope that, we fund because I would love for all the people who have reached out and responded so well to this project with exactly what you're saying, where a lot of people are like, yo, this is something that's important to me. And I really appreciate that. Like someone like you is out there talking about it. Uh, 
in making something so cool. Because like my goal with all of this is is you know ultimately to do my small bit to hopefully relieve society of the taboos around mental health because I'm tired of it. Being yeah. someone who's suffered with depression and anxiety and been told countless times like, oh, you just need to let it go. Or, oh, you just, mm-hmm. you know, you just need to put on a smile and keep going. And it's like, you don't understand how fucking hard what you're asking me to do is. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. I, it's literally almost an impossible, insurmountable task. So, like, I really want there to be more positive discussions around mental health and depression. And, yeah, so I'm starting my own. <laughs> yeah. Mental health isn't treated like other health concerns, and that's a problem. Agreed. If you have diabetes, no one tells you to walk diabetes off. There's a treatment. Mm-hmm. There's something you do to make it better. There's something to do to help you manage the symptoms, and there's something you do to make it not kill you. And that's mental health too. But for some reason we we don't acknowledge that. We don't acknowledge that yes, there is treatment for mental health. There is various kinds of you know counseling you can have there's also medication there's all kinds of things that can happen and it seems to not be acknowledged and respected mm-hmm. nearly as much as actual you know physical medicine and I, it's it's just so ridiculous but it's kind of emblematic of our society mm. yeah unfortunately but, yeah. we're stuck in the what 1600s at least <laughs> if not yeah. further back with the mentality surrounding like where people back then, they just didn't know. And they thought anybody that had mental health problems was crazy. And yeah, like and we're, barely, weird, yeah. we're barely better than that now. <laughs> so, yeah. And I mean, there's some political reasons we could talk about what we won't get into. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we're all on the same page there. Uh, yeah. So let's talk, let's talk about the Kickstarter. So uh, for those of you guys wanting to kickstart this zine, uh, you can find Justin at Emo Comic Writer on Twitter. Um, there is a link there uh, to the Kickstarter. And yes. first of all, obviously, we have the zine. Uh, that's important. But there's so many cool bits of swag in this. So I want to yeah. quickly run this down. Uh, the prints we mentioned from the zine are available as 5 by 7 prints mm-hmm. uh, for $5 out on each. And they're awesome. Um, there's also some uh, pins, including uh, the, there's a pin which glows in the dark. Got and, that and one. With, Hell yeah! Which was designed by Val. That's which my is awesome. Yeah, that's like my one of my favorite pieces of swag we have. It's awesome. so cool. It's cool. I love the the battery symbol. Like, oh, it's just so great. So, <laughs> great. Um, yeah. And then, most importantly, and this is why we started by talking about finger guns. Um, you can actually get finger guns via this Kickstarter if mm. you support a high enough tier. And this is an excellent way to catch up on finger guns if you guys haven't read it. This includes individual issues. This includes variants. This includes the trade, all of which are available on different tiers. Well, now, because um, some of them got sold out. I was, I was catching up on Justin's tweets. Oh, I haven't even checked, actually. The trade did sell out, but I did uh, secure 10 more copies. So we're back to the trade is currently available to 10 more people. Nice. That's good. I'm trying to remember. I think I got the trade. (laughs) So I'm hoping I did because I don't think I I don't know if I own the the trade. I tend to get duplicate trades and give them away. (laughs) So (laughs) if if you if you Uh, want, I can check your order and let you know what you ordered. It, it tells oh, I have me my phone things. right in front of me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, do, I have a whole do your own work starters. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, there's so many options on this Kickstarter, and it's a really great thing to uh, to push. You know, again, it not only has a great message, uh, you know, for our society, but also you get a really good comic book at the same time. So I 100% recommend doing that. Um, was there anything else, Justin? Because um, there is because one thing with the Z. There's one oh, new, ahead, new yes, piece, please. new piece of swag that I don't know oh, if shoot. you guys thought yet. Uh, there are so for issue one of Finger Guns, we had planned an exclusive cover for Emerald City Comic Con, uh, which is an amazing spot gloss glitter cover um, of Jen Hickman's <laughs> cover, and oh, I I have. 
exactly i had eight to put up i think two have already sold if not three but uh so there's like a handful of the glitter covers that are signed by both val and myself which there's only one other copy in existence that has both mine and val's uh, signatures on it because 2020 sucked so hard so yeah it's a pretty exclusive (laughs) club where at the end of it I mean, I won't lie. I kept one for myself. So there's going to be 10 total <laughs> in existence. Uh, <laughs> where I love that glitter cover, have, by the way. It's so good. Right? It's so good. I love what Jen Hickman did with the covers, our variant covers, mm-hmm. which you can you can get all of the number one variant covers on a tier. Um, or, yeah, you can, as an add-on, you can add the glitter cover with double signature from me and Val. That's awesome. I think I did. I actually did the variant one because I do own the trade and I wanted all the variants. That's, that's nice. what it was. So yeah, <laughs> that's what I did. So yeah. Um, so yeah. So that's an add on to a pledge. Yes. Yeah. Just like the prints and okay. the, uh, the enamel pin. That's now an add on. Okay. Cool. I might have to go back and adjust my. Right. That's awesome. Um, great. Well, that's really cool. Now, I wanted to ask because you kind of teased. You know, let's assume this gets funded because it should be for the record, guys. Yeah. Um, and we're please, we're on our way. We can. We're at like fifty-seven yeah. percent right now. We've got like. 19 days left so we're, we're on a good pace i'm pretty happy with where the campaign yeah, the is first three days were fucking strong it was awesome like I mean, yeah yeah that was cool. one. <laughs> so, yeah like um, then there's days like today where i haven't had a single new backer but you know bitch. start pushing it again that's, that's yeah. what's up well that's why it's we're doing the interview <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um so what what i wanted to go ahead and ask is let's assume this gets funded Obviously, magazines aren't usually one shots. Is this something you want to continue doing? Is this an angle you would like to continue doing? I guess that's the same way to say it. Initially, and I'll say currently, I don't have plans for another one. But if the reception is as good as it has been, and I think you're probably the fourth or fifth person to ask me if there would be more. Um including like I've had a number of artists reach out and be like, Hey, I wish I would have known that you were doing pinups for this. This is amazing. I would have loved to have contributed. So, you know, right there, mm-hmm. that's kind of, in my opinion, that was one of the most uh, fun parts. And like, as a collector, that's what I would be stoked on the most was, is the pinup gallery. Cause yeah. I mean, we have Daniel Warren Johnson in that, in that pinup gallery. Yes. And I mean, and like you said, all the that's other crazy. names are really just as exciting. My buddy Chris Kaler, who is a Mondo and New Yorker artist, he did a piece. And then, yeah, we got Megan Hutchison and Liana Kangas and Val. So, yeah. Yeah. If I, so maybe, yeah. I guess it's a very long way of saying maybe. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, definitely. I mean, uh, our first goal, obviously, is to get this one pledged, to get this one covered. Uh, so obviously, uh, we want you guys all to go out there. Once again, I will repeat: you can follow Justin at emo comic writer on Twitter, and the link is there. It's this pinned tweet. You can check it out. There's a pretty good reviews or pretty good previews of everything, and you can also check out uh, all the different rewards on the Kickstarter. It's a very uh, straightforward Kickstarter. Um, sometimes, because we do a monthly thing where we we kickstart at least one comic every month as a podcast. That's awesome, and so. Yeah, it's just kind of like because we're we're about indie books, you know. We want we want other people to succeed too, you know. So yeah. we love the big two. Don't I get us wrong, but yeah. So um, so yours was one of our two. We knew we were going to back yours, so we did two this month <laughs> just because. <laughs> so um, well, but yeah, sometimes cheap. you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, not the way I back things, but <laughs> yeah, no, true. <laughs> you can add it up, um, for sure. and now the glitter cover <laughs> might might wreck you some more. Who knows. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm doing it as we're talking. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah. But uh, one thing I, I noticed about Kickstarter pages sometimes the Kickstarter pages are really kind of like chaotic. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And like it's hard to figure out. Wait, what? What's the different tiers? Yours is really clear. So Thank anyone you. out there, it's really easy to read. You can figure out what it is. So yeah. 
I really, um, that makes me so happy. Uh, cause yeah, I, it's not easy. Uh, like you think like, Oh, I'll just do a Kickstarter and like, man, there's so much to it. And then, yeah, like when it came time to like make the page, I was like, crap, I hope like, I'm, I hope everybody gets it and like gets everything. And I wanted to make sure that there was lots of pictures of our stuff. And I wanted this campaign to be cheap and simple and just like, it's yeah, something, you know, it's my first Kickstarter too. So like, I'm trying to be easy on y'all and myself. So <laughs> definitely. Uh, but yeah, we, we see a lot of Kickstarters and this one definitely is uh, we're, we're excited about it as well. We'll say so uh, we're going to bump it up a little bit today uh, as I hit continue on my Kickstarter. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Thank you very much. So we are, of course. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and wrap it up today. Uh, we want to thank Justin for joining us. Uh, Justin, did you have anything else to plug? Anything else you want to mention while we got you? Mm, just go buy Finger Guns, back this scene, and be on the lookout for another Kickstarter later this summer from me. So, Oh, cool. you heard it here first. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Justin, no, I, I have it. a question for you. Um, yeah, yeah, last, time, um, last time we talked, uh, I was still doing, I was doing a the other music uh show was infinite playlist then and you gave me one of the best fucking picks ever a personal favorite i'm still doing it it's called jukebox vertigo now uh so to put you quick under pressure uh i need a song from you and the next theme is anti-love song uh so top of your head whatever it is anti-love song yeah yeah so it's kind of right up your head with the emo stuff last time you gave us shake it off the cover to uh taylor swift by the screaming females and Oh God, it's one of my favorite ones of all time. So <laughs> it's a great one. Give it to me. <laughs> so okay. yeah, off the top of your head, your favorite anti-love song, basically. And does it have to be a cover? Mm, no, 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 whatever no. you want it to be. Okay, let me think for a second here. Anti-love. <laughs> what? I've been listening to a lot of good punk lately too. So like that's nice. That's right. Have oh, you guys man. ever heard of the punk band uh, Masked Intruder? Masked Intruder? No, but I will after this. Oh. Yeah, so look <laughs> them up because so it's this punk band that they all dress up like they all have a different colored like ski mask on. <laughs> and then from there, like imagine kind of Weezer esque, like uh, but like oh, man. <laughs> but more indie, <laughs> like indie pop indie punk and the, all their songs are about both like their love songs that also tie together with like robbing people it's hilarious uh, <laughs> so there's a lot of there's a lot of anti-love songs there um god sorry to put you on the spot so <laughs> no, no, <I'm> <laughs> okay. I, I i listen to a lot of music so there's always stuff running through my head you know yeah. yeah, that's too. That's why we have a podcast for. <laughs> so. Also, we have since started over. So again, you could pick the same one if you wanted to as your go-to. Does it have another anti love song? Not really, but yeah, kind we're of. all we're starting fresh over. I was yeah. thinking, um, yeah, what's the name of it? I don't know if it counts, but and it's it's a weird one. But uh, are you familiar with um? Uh, typo negative <laughs> yes yeah i was saying like christian woman that's kind of an anti-love song yes christian yeah, woman that's, awesome. a, that's a great one Excellent. there you go Thank awesome you. all right uh, well, guys, what's burning in your mind and in in between your thighs everyone <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome all right, guys. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us for this awesome interview with Justin Richards. Uh, once again, at emo comic writer on Twitter. Back the Kickstarter. I want my rewards. So <laughs> I need all of you to help us with this. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at WHI Podcast. You can follow me at WHI Podcast Liz. Our co host and producer, Liz, at, w oh, no, sorry, WHI Podcast Keith. I jumped ahead. <laughs> Our producer and co host, Liz, at WHI Podcast Liz. I'm not Liz. Uh, Hostway at Hostway reads Hostway. You can also follow the Jukebox Hostway mentioned at Jukebox Vertigo on Twitter. Uh, and you can always follow us on our 
mother channel, Geek Elite Media, including recently, just yesterday, we got interviewed for the first time. Instead of interviewing other people, they interviewed us. It was fun. And it was a different situation for me. (laughs) It's weird switching sides, uh, huh? Yeah, I wanted to run the whole thing. <laughs> like, was, like so, yeah. So check that like, out. Did you did and you also, do a sound check? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also check out our interview earlier this week with Jed McKay talking about uh, all the books he's doing, including Black Cat and uh, the new Magic the Gathering comic, which just came out this Wednesday. So check those all out and keep an eye out for future interviews with us on our main channel as well as Geekly Media. Thank you so much for joining us, and don't forget to always geek out. This concludes our broadcast.